live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering ZertoCon 2018. Brought to you by Zerto. This is theCUBE, I'm Paul Gillen. We're here at ZertoCon 2018 in Boston. Final day of ZertoCon, a beautiful May day. And uh, the keynote we heard this morning by John Morenci, Gartner analyst, uh, talking about resilience. It's something that you've been doing for the last 11 years at Gartner, I understand. Yeah, that, that's right, Paul. So my career at Gartner has really been focused primarily in recovery, continuity, resilience. I've had the good fortune to have done well, well over 10,000 inquiries with about 3,300 organizations across the world. And if nothing else, it's given me a good opportunity to see what's happening, what's not happening in that area, how services and how the technology is evolving. So it's been a lot of fun. You, you said something that uh, struck me this morning. You said that two years ago you were sort of the voice in the wilderness talking about resilience. Today it's a mainstream uh, topic. What has changed in that time? I think the, so I, I think a couple things. Number one is that with, so what's happened with resilience in the past couple of years, what's changed? Number one, the impact of digital business. And the, with digital business, given that it's an always on operation, that it spans both production data centers and public clouds, the trying to apply some older technologies or methodologies like disaster recovery to a digital business, an always-on digital business, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I think what happened was that, the, that we began to see, both internally as well as externally, a significant rise in customer inquiries specific to resilience. So, for example, uh, from calendar year 2017 to 2018, year over year, we've seen a 30-35% increase in customer-related inquiries. It actually, we, we began to sense that something was really going on at our infrastructure and operations data center summit back in 2015. I had about 40 inquiries during that conference and resilience came up in about 75%. And it wasn't just financial services, it wasn't just healthcare, it wasn't just telecom providers, it was lots of different verticals. And so at that time, I, I, my conclusion was something interesting is going on here, but I don't think sometimes that what's happening at a lot of individual clients sometimes always translates or flows back into what Gartner covers from a research standpoint, but I think with 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 e-business, with the focus, especially around uh, cyber resilience, threat attack mitigation, if nothing else, cyber attack resilience has probably been the most one of the most significant drivers to create the need for resilience. And I think what's happened there is it's actually pulled through some of the operations availability, some of the data integrity management, and so on. So I think, without a doubt. Cyber resilience has been probably the most significant driver. What's uh, really changed? When you think back six or eight years ago, it wasn't uncommon for Amazon to go down or, or Twitter, the yeah, fail whale. That's right. Uh, some big services would would go offline sometimes for for hours. We really don't hear about that anymore. And and is that because it's it's a commonplace, or is are are these organizations now so good at resilience that they virtually eliminated downtime? Downtime never gets eliminated. We had an interesting discussion with the Amazon a, a few years back, and the perspective that they shared with us was, look, we're getting better at sustaining continuity and availability, but we'll be the first to admit that things happen, unexpected things happen, it can be the result of an external event which you can't control, it can be the uh, result of an internal event, but what's happened is that there, there's a separation of duties that's interesting to note. So if you look at Amazon and, and Microsoft and Google, they do a great job at keeping the infrastructure, the cloud services, the infrastructure as a service, alive and, and humming and scalable and elastic and so on. However, when you look at what's going on in the context of either a virtual machine or a container or or some other type of uh, uh, compute instance, that's where the provider's responsibilities end from, a, from an availability point of view, from a data integrity point of view, 
And so that's where, even though the providers themselves have great service levels, so Amazon may report five nines, six nines, whatever it happens to be in terms of unplanned downtime, you can still have disruptions for specific customers within virtual private clouds that may be the result of, it may be, it could be a, an external attack, it could be a misapplied change. And so there's this duality in terms of unplanned downtime from the cloud provider's perspective, but from the cloud customer's perspective. And the two quite often are very different. Interesting point. Now, now we're now, now also seeing the emergence of some new computing paradigms. Container is a huge phenomenon right now. Right. Serverless computing, right. microservices in which there are, uh, in which computers, uh, instances may be spun up for literally milliseconds uh, for connections. Is that going to contribute, is that going to create a re resilience problem or does it in fact solve resilience problems? Uh, I, think it, I think it could be a little of both. Certainly when you make the, when you make the compute service less complex and there are few, fewer moving parts, and you leave the orchestration of the service fulfillment function into in the hands of the provider who can do a better job at that, that could certainly have an impact on improving the level of resilience, not just from the provider's point of view, obviously, but from the provider's customer point of view. But with microservices or containers or what have you, there's still the issue of sustainable data integrity. How do I know that my data is what I expect it to be, where I expect it to be, uh, has there been any unplanned change, because some of the changes in the data can be the result of things that have happened internally as well as externally with a, with a, with a uh, given service provider customer. And so from that point of view, certainly the fewer moving parts, the reduced complexity, the orchestration automation that the provider provides, no doubt that will help. I think at the same time, there's still some issues, especially around um, around data integrity, cyber attack mitigation, data protection, that I think will still be specific issues and opportunities for for cloud provider customers to focus on. Now we're all about to see companies are very excited about the Internet of Things and the possibility of getting into streaming data, right. really large scale data collection about to come online. What kind of new resilience challenges will that present? I think getting back to what we were talking about earlier, when you look at streaming services or Internet of Things, it's it's the additional complexity, it's the, the value chain, if you will, the service delivery value chain between the source and the destination. So more moving parts creates opportunity for greater complexity. There's no one entity that is responsible from a service assurance point of view for each and every component part. So certainly there's a huge opportunity from a, a, a new business opportunity and a service fulfillment point of view. But from a resilience point of view, given that you have more moving parts, that you have, that you have distributed entities responsible for managing that, uh, it does create some new, new risks, new issues, but also, but also new opportunities. Have we as an industry solved all of those yet? Not really. I think this is very much a work in progress. We've got also uh, the a tremendous focus now on information governance, uh, particularly with new regulations coming online, companies trying to get a better handle on the data that they've got. Do these disciplines merge at some point, resilience and, and governance? Very much so, very much so. It gets back to the question, the, one of the key questions around resilience is, who is responsible and accountable for making business and operations resilience within an organization happens. And one of the things that we've seen, if you look at it from a senior management point of view, really the responsibility I think is co-owned by both the, the chief risk officer and, and the chief information officer, and probably you could chat, add the chief information security officer on top of that. But since resilience in, in many ways is, is top down, it, it's not just at the infrastructure level. It has culture implications, it has business process implications. It ha even has implications on what the individuals within the organization need to know about, what they need to be aware of. All of that is related to effective top-down governance. And in the keynote this morning, when I spoke about that bank uh, that, that I'd work with, they, they had that problem in spades in terms of 
uh, in terms of different businesses, different geographies, where to start in terms of the governance model, where to start with what services and what geographies, with what business opportunities. But even with that initial focus, had the bank entirely addressed its resilience challenge? Not really, and that, that, that's a process that will likely will take several, several years to complete. Uh, and uh, plenty for you to talk about with your clients, those inquiries over absolutely, the coming year. No absolutely. No shortage of changes there. John Morenci, thanks very much for joining us. My pleasure, Paul. We're, from, we're here in ZertoCon 2018 in Boston. I'm Paul Gillen. This is theCUBE.